Our teacher asked a question which uh, uh, I reserve the answer, my opinion, not really my opinion, but something that we do is, is he pray for us that we will use the understanding of this trinity to benefit our lives. He pray that prayer. And we pray that prayer every day, but we don't put our heart into it. How many we share grace in our lives? Okay, let's say the grace. I'm not saying we are living right now, so don't be in a hurry to me. Okay? But let's share grace for a moment. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of who? The Holy Spirit. When you see that grace, Trinity is involved. And that's how we relate with God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And the way our text puts it, it says, follow God. When you follow God, then walk with Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit comes in. And that's what is said before us. But I'm going to leave that alone. But bear in mind that you are not alone. I like the, I'm not a mathematician, but I love math. And I like the picture he gave to us, the triangle. You know, when I was growing up and I became a Christian, what we learned was the concentric circle. So that we are inside the concentric circle. And you know, when you are inside the concentric circle, it's difficult for the enemy to pray to uh, penetrate. But thank God that we now, we move from the concentric triangle into the triangle. We now live within the Trinity. Hallelujah. Amen. We fellowship. The fellowship. We, know, we talk about relationship. Fellowship is the same thing as relationship. And where you are, we are relational people. That's how God has created us. And that's why he desire for us to be in relationship with him. Amen. And this morning, we're looking at a text, and um, I'm excited about it, not because um, of what I do, but at least to be in the master's shoe is exciting, okay? From our text this morning, we'll see Christ as our Savior, as a teacher. He spoke to his disciples in parables. Just like we are growing up, our parents tell stories, right? And tell us all kinds of stories. Some of them, I, I never understood them because I didn't live in their time. And Jesus was living in a kind of agrarian community at the time. And he told the disciples many, many parables. But when the time is right, the disciple will always ask, Master, what is the meaning? What is the meaning of this parable? And this parable is not an exception. The parable we're looking at this morning is a very simple and straightforward parable. It is interpreted by Christ himself, our Lord. God explains its essential meaning. The story cannot be twisted. It's a profound story about our lives. If I step on your toes this morning, bear with me. My prayer, my desire is that the Holy Spirit will open our hearts and minds to see where we are. Where do I stand? What are the thorns in my own lives? And that's what it's all about. Real life. Your life and mine. Now you hear the word seed. You know, seed is a multiple meaning word. Because I have to teach children all of that. But I don't think I have to teach adults that. It means that seed has more than one meaning. And that's what it says, a multiple meaning word. But the meaning of the seed here, as we'll find out, 
is the word of God. It is the word of truth. The other seed is the seed of life. When we talk about Protom Evangelium. Uh, pardon me, I'm not trying to impress you. you know. Protom Evangelium is what we find in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. When the Bible says, the seed of the woman will do what? Rules. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 That's the different seed. And then the other seed that you sow in terms of giving. But that's not what we're talking about this morning. What we're talking about this morning is the seed of the word of God. It boils down to four basic responses people have towards spiritual things. I'm not going to tell you anything new or maybe something you have not heard before. But I just want you to go a little bit deeper with me this morning. Because in this parable, we'll see four basic responses that people respond to spiritual things. And I'm trusting the Holy Spirit to illuminate our hearts and minds so that you can find where you are. How do you stand when it comes to spiritual things? See, once again, Jesus began teaching by the lake shore. A very large crowd soon gathered around him. So he got into a boat. Then he sat in the boat while all the people, all the people remained on the shore. He taught them by telling many stories in the forms of parable, such as the one that we have read. Why did I read that? Why did I lay emphasis on that? We all agree that the seed is the word of God. I believe we are saved in saying the word refers to truth. The God's truth, not your truth, not my truth, but the truth God, the truth word of God. Truth for living. So I urge you this morning to please listen carefully to what the Holy Spirit has to say to you. Living life giving word provides for us by the Lord our Savior Jesus Christ. What do you expect to see? What do you expect to hear? Let me tell you what you should expect to see and hear this morning. The insight in this parable, the perspective and the wisdom that grow in us when the seed take root in our heart. The insight the perspective and the wisdom that follows when the seed takes root in our heart. Just like we learned this morning, and that was a lot of questions that were asked, but the answer boiled down to what? The word of God, the truth word of God. Four different soils. What do they represent? And that's why I read verse 1 again. The four different soils represent people of all ages. It represents all interests. It represents all background. It doesn't matter whether it's uh, uh, any age. It doesn't matter what is your own interest. What do you like? What do you enjoy? What do you watch? Or what you don't watch? Your background, whether you are born rich or you are born poor. And I said, all the people, you know, the all interest, all age, all background, they all respond to things 
in these four various ways. Okay, let me go down to verse 3. Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seed, and as he scattered it across his field, some of the seed fell on footpath, and the bird came and ate it. Other seed fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seed sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow. But the plant soon withered under the hot sun, and since it didn't have deep roots, it died. Let me stop right there. What is it saying? That some, they listen. And immediately, what did they do? They rejected the word. That's why they are not in church. That's a group. And I, like I said, I'm going to come. I love the analogy our teacher used this morning. And I'll come to that. They reject the word instantly. They turn it off. And that's why they're not in church. So that's a group. That's how they respond to spiritual things. It's a different thing if we are showing a movie or we're talking about how to get rich quickly. They won't turn that off. They will be there. But when it comes to spiritual things, huh, they turn it off and they move off. That's one group. Others hear and seems to enjoy. They enjoy the word of God. And even respond well on the surface. But soon spin off. They enjoy it. You sing hallelujah, they sing hallelujah. You pray praise the Lord, they say praise the Lord. But if you look around, the next time, you can't find them. They are no more in church. We'll see why. When the bubble bursts and the going gets raw, they take off. They can't stand. But they enjoy it. They even play Christian music in their cars. They play their music in the in their houses. They watch TBN. Do you know people like that? Still, others grab an old and initially embrace what they hear. But by and by, they get subtracted and their growth is startled. By life's tongue. I've spoken of uh, the first two groups and the third one are in the church. The fourth one are in the church. And my focus this morning is on the third group and the fourth group. There's some kind of similarity in this group as the Lord explains this parable to us. The question is, where do you belong? Where do I belong? Because these two groups, they are responding to the word of God that they are both hearing. But what is going on? We'll find out. The others grab hold and initial embrace what they hear. But by and by they get subtracted as they grow. Trustful by life's thumb. Then, as always, there are those who hear, believe, grow, hanging in there. And before long begin to, to produce as healthy plants in God's vineyard. Amen. Amen. This is Divine Yard Ministry. This is God's garden. 
this God's house. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And like I said, these two groups, they are in the house. They are in God's vineyard. To call the Lord's glory short, it is obvious that the first two groups are those who are not born again. They are not born again. They have not known Christ as Lord and personal Savior. They have not been forgiven of their sins. They have not repented. There is no godly sorrow for their lifestyle or the way they are living. So they are gone. That's how they responded to the word of God. And it's not different today. You talk to somebody about Christ. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want that. I've had out, uh, sorry, a, a, a lady and a baby sitting at the corner of the street. I had a bottle of water in my hand and I have a truck and I went to her and said, man, it's hot. Can you take water and take this? And oh, no, thank you. I don't want it. Okay. They rejected it, right? Instantly. So it's not strange. What we are reading today is still happening. And that's what I'm saying, that the two other groups, the third group and the fourth group, are in the house. They are in the church. Well, let's look at this third group. What's going on? A little bit about the first two group because I'll talk about they uh, they are rootless. They don't have no root. They are lifeless because they could not stay. They know the shallow. The world went to shallow soil, shallow ground. That's why they are not here, and they are fruitless. You look at their life; it's 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 sad. It's obvious that the last group is. The last two groups are born again Christians. They are submissive, they are active, and they are productive. That's the last group. But precisely, like I said this morning, my focus is on the third group. It's a group that I'm concerned and bothered about. They are Christians, believers. Because they grow and get right to the verge of bearing fruit. But their growth become retarded. Why? Have you wondered why people are in the church? And you are expecting them to grow, begin to love God more, begin to serve God more. What happened? They become one leg in, one leg out. No consistency. Why? Why? Let's see what the Lord has to say. What that is happening. These people, they hear everything in the God, in the fourth group. But those insights and needed truths are never really accepted, never allowed to take root and grow. Why? It's because thorns have come in. Thorns which suffocate the normal healthy growth of each plant. I don't know how many of us have done gardening before, but when you plant your beautiful flower, because I have done, even though at the beginning I didn't like flowers, I didn't appreciate them. But uh, I got uh, inducted at one point of my life. I began to see the flowers are beautiful. That the hands work of God. I've seen different species. And I went from there to begin to watch, I watch birds. And I've seen birds of different color. That began my mind begin to enlarge to see, wow. I, I knew at that point, I knew little about God's creation. Then my wife, my eyes became open. And I appreciate every little bird. There's a bird that is stuck into my image of my mind. But a very tiny little bird, he has a blue, he has a yellow, 
there is a red column. It's so beautiful. And I said, how can God, who, who can create mm -hmm. something like this? It's only God. Mm -hmm. I begin to appreciate God. But when you plant your flower, few weeks, few months, what do you see? Thorns. And they will begin to grow even faster than the flower. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And what are they? Are they there to help the flower? Hey, no. They are ready to suffocate. Uh, I'm forgetting what we call the, the the chemical we use. They call it magic or magic grow or something like that. And you you spray it around the the, the thorns and they just wither. They die. If not, they will choke your flower. And it's the same thing in our heart. Our heart is like a god. It's a soil. It's a garden. Where the word of God dwells, that's where it rise, it, 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 um, it, it, it grow and bear fruits. These stones, they treat us and cause us miseries. They are killers. They kill everything that is spiritual in our lives. Why am I so concerned? I have said this, and I would like to remind people that the battle you face is not only physical. What you are seeing in the physical is a manifestation. Are you hearing me? The battle, the challenge that we face first come, take place in the spiritual. And that's why if you know your Redeemer, if you know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, and you are growing in the Word of God, you always know that your first responder is prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. That's a spiritual thing. When I have a headache, before I visit my wife's cabinet to take more trim, I go to talk to Jesus first. Because I don't know where it's coming from. And sometimes you will ask me, have you taken more trim? No, I'm not taking more trim. But the Holy Spirit said, don't take more trim, you'll be fine. Hallelujah. You deal with it spiritually first. That's where victory is. Hallelujah. Amen. I want a person say, why some people have victory is because they've learned to speak to God before the battle. Are you listening to me? But for those who don't know that secret, they come to God during the battle. Sometimes it doesn't work that way. But God is still merciful. Amen? Amen. He will still intervene. But how he wish that we know the secret that he has given to us, like we are learning this morning. Do you have the Holy Spirit? Can you tell the Spirit, hey, the mark of the Lord is upon me, so don't bother me. Don't even trying to call the army. And he will listen. We read it this morning. You resist the devil. He will do what? But if you don't know that, that comes from the word of God that we are talking about. How do you respond to that? I was talking a couple of nights ago to a team member. And I said to them, I said, what I have learned, I'm, and I don't know the answer, is that a lot of people read the Bible. Will you agree with me? But well, most people do not know how to apply the word of the living God. That's number one. Number two, they do not know how to appropriate the word of the living God. Applying is different from appropriating. But when you are in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, then you will understand what I'm talking about. 
Amen. Amen. Because when you are in a situation and you have learned to study, to read the word of the living God, even in your very situation that you are in, the Holy Spirit brings the word back to you. Say it. You just say the word, and here comes the victory. Amen. Amen. Because again, the Bible says, by word will not return to me void. Hallelujah. Amen. But it would accompany the purpose in which it was set for. That's how important it is for us to know and dwell in the word of God. So you know how to apply it, application. Then you know how to appropriate it. So that next time you are sick or you feel any way in your body, I expect the doctors, I expect the nurses, they are gifts of God unto us. But before you step out, talk to God. Stand on the word of promise. I won't, let me let me let me pick back a little bit. Um, Thanksgiving Day, I had some go run around that we did and then I ended up in the hospital of course I was there the day before to see my aunt who I just went through surgery I didn't know what to tell her she told me what happened on the phone and all of that and the husband and all of that but each time I begin to pray I begin to Claim the word of God, because that's all I know how to do. That you will be healed. Because she was, she, she was, she did not sleep for six days. If somebody cannot sleep for six days, you know what I mean. And she's not even as fat as I am. She's so skinny, you know. But we pray and believe God for a quick recovery. And I said, the Bible says, healing is the food of his children. Ha! Healing. So you don't have to struggle. It's not about struggling. It's not about asking because God is your father. Like we're like, live in that experience. That's how to appropriate the word of God. Make it your own. Tell God that you said it. Hallelujah. He, the Bible says he watches over his word to perform. Amen. Have you tried it? Has it worked for it has worked for me? It's working for me. And you may ask me, oh, what happened? Uh, when you don't have results, and this is why uh, I enjoy everything because. How many people, you don't have to raise your hand, you are facing one challenge or the other, I don't care what it is. But even if you don't raise your hands, I know this, that if you are not pursuing something, something is pursuing you. Are you listening to me? Because that is the world that we are living in. That is the world that we are living in. But if you know the secret of living on the word of God, the promises of God, you will be fine. But this morning, I'd like to tell you something. That what you are going through, what you are seeing, what is overwhelming you, is the maneuvering of the shaking if you are a child of God, if God is your father and you walk in the Holy Spirit, what you are going through is a shaking, it's a maneuvering of God to take you to the next stage. Amen. I can hear you. Amen. Amen. Because every time we have been programmed that when something is happening, oh, it's always the devil. Don't give the devil the glory, give God the glory. Talk more about God's doing than what the devil is doing. You may not understand what I'm talking to you about this morning. Let me give you a good picture that you can take with you. In Alaska, they were shipping cord 
I don't even know that there's a lot of fish in Alaska. Yeah, I think I just told my wife, and said, what are flounders? I said, flounders are fish. So we all enjoy it together. Okay. And the first time they shipped the corn to this part of the country, all of the corn, they died. Wow. They said that didn't work out. Then they went back, did some research. They took the same fresh water, seawater, whatever it is, and loaded it with the cord. They came, they brought them, and guess what? They died. Hallelujah. But then they went back. This third time, they pulled the cord in the same water. And they put the catfish with them. That's their enemy. The god and the, and, the, and the catfish, they don't see eye to eye. And they brought them to places like California. Those call were alive. And they said they even tasted better. Why? Why did that happen? Their enemy gave them the energy. Hallelujah. And I'm saying to you, your challenge this morning is your way to victory in Jesus' name. Amen. It's the way to your next promotion. Amen. Your sickness, what you think is a sickness to you, is leading you to an experience to see God that He is your healer, the Jehovah Jireh that He is. Amen. But if you don't have a sickness, you wouldn't know that. But we complain and we give the devil the glory. And I'm saying, I'm not afraid anymore. Even if there's no vine, fruit on the vine, I will still praise him. Because I know he's leading me somewhere. Oh, he's leading me somewhere. But here is a problem. The thorns. These thorns are killers. Let us understand that the thorns did not come in after the seed was sown. If you look through that picture, it's just like when you plant, you know, the flower like I talk about. You don't see the thorns, but they are there. The same thing with our heart. Those thorns are there. So when the seed comes in, it depends on what you allow to grow. It's up to you. The thorns were already present. The seed entered. And the thorns were never